Hello and welcome to SSA Masters. My name is Athraziz and I am your teacher for this course. It is our first lecture on financial management. Let's start with seeing the difference between financial management, financial accounting and management accounting. Okay. So first of all, let's see what is management accounting. Using management accounting, we can compute cost of several products departments at different stages so it provides the useful information for day-to-day -day decision which assist management for making decision and there are no strict rules for making or for computing these costs whereas if we talk about financial accounting then in financial accounting we have several standards IFRS in place and we have to prepare our accounting books according to the given standards these transactions give information about the past event and we can see a big picture of the whole business by seeing the or by reading the accounting books right now if we talk about the financial management then financial management looks at long term raising of finance and control of resources. Let's see these things in more details. It is our first chapter of financial management and its name is the financial management function. In this video, I will brief you this whole chapter. Let's continue okay so if i talk about a company then every company have any mission statement right and in this mission statement company describes its objectives that what uh, why the company exists what they want to achieve okay everything is mentioned in this mission statement so company clearly describe its objectives in its mission statements now to achieve these objectives the company obviously needs some finance so that they can invest into so that they can invest into the company to run its operations smoothly now here we have a financial manager and as a role of financial manager financial manager he has to take decisions related to investments for example there can be number of projects project number one two three four and so on he has to take decision that which investment is more suitable and these investment decisions should be in line with the company's objectives okay he has to take decisions related to the dividends. For example, they take decision that either to distribute these dividends among the shareholders or not. If yes, then how much dividends they should uh, distribute among the shareholders and how much they should reinvest into the company again okay because it can directly affect the value of business and its ability to raise further finance in future these are two major sources of finance and here we have one more important role of financial manager that is related to working capital for example it's related to the day-to-day -day requirement of finance which is needed by the company but it's related to short term okay and 
इट्स रिलेटेड टू मैनेजमेंट ऑफ लिक्विडिटी ऑफ द कंपनी ओके so it means the investment decisions can be short term and long term now we have an other concept of shareholders wealth maximization almost every organization has an objective to maximize the wealth of their investors and here we have a strong argument in the favor of this statement when somebody take decision to invest or to buy shares of any company then they take some degree of risk and as a result of taking this risk they should be given premium in sense of maximizing their wealth whereas they could also invest in the risk free government securities but they are not investing in risk free government security instead they are investing in any company so they are taking some degree of risk so as a result we can argue that it should be the primary objective of every company to maximize the wealth of their shareholder it is very important here to distinguish and remember that shareholders wealth maximization is different than the shareholders profit maximization these two are separate concepts there are many problems associated with this profit maximization concept let me tell you in order to maximize the profit a company can take any strategy a company can adopt any strategy that can result in fall of share price for example in order to maximize the profit a company can simply cut down some of its expenses like marketing expenses like r and d search and development expenses training expenses and so on so in this way company can maximize its profit by reducing or by cutting down its expenses right but this tactic can easily be identified by stock market and as a result the share price can fall now this share price may also fall by an other concept which is known as poor quality earning according to this concept a business take high risks to achieve high profits now the stock market will refer it as poor quality earnings and now what will happen the risk averse kind of shareholders risk averse can simply sell the share of such a company because they may think that it is highly risk company so they may simply sell their share and as a result the price of share will fall
so these are the major problems which are associated with the concept of profit maximization concept a company can also measure its success using eps earning per shares it is pair plus preference dividend divided by number of shares issued using it we can measure the return to equity but it carries the same criticism which rests with the concept of profit maximization because using eps no doubt we can measure the return on equity but it does not measure or it not represent the income of shareholders right instead it only represent investors own share of income for example is the income of shareholders right but this concept only measure this small portion which is associated with the investors own share of income so it is an other drawback of using eps now we have some more concepts that we should know here we have a concept of maximizing versus satisfying maximizing versus satisfying according to the concept of maximizing a company tries to achieve higher return by exposing itself to the higher risk and obviously it will also increase the workload of management on the other hand according to the concept of satisfying a company try to hold returns at satisfactory level and also reduce the workload of management now we have an other important concept of stakeholders stakeholders are those who have vested interest in the company for example it can be employee of the company they can be directors they can be shareholders uh, they can also be the banks of the company for example they are interested in lending loans to the company right and similarly uh, they can be customers they can be your suppliers and they can be even government because government is also interested to know that how much tax they can collect from you and for many other reasons for example related to import and export and in this group and there can also be general public or community at large now as a role of manager a manager should balance between the need and objectives of all stakeholders 
for example in case of high returns high returns the employees of the company or trade union may claim for higher wages or higher salaries now a conflict of interest may arise between employees of the companies and the shareholders of the company for example in order to satisfy employees provide no more than adequate returns to the shareholders so as a role of manager a manager should balance between the needs and objectives of all the stakeholders and it was one of the example now we have another concept of agency theory in agency theory we have two parties one is principal and the other party is agent for example the principal can be the shareholders of the company and agents can be directors of the company now it is a relationship where one party principal in this case we uh, we talk about shareholders employees and other party for example the agent the directors to act and perform task on their behalf a conflict of interest may also arise in this theory for example the directors may try to maximize their remuneration instead of maximizing the wealth of shareholders right for example they can uh, they can falsely increase their remuneration their bonuses and ignore the ignore to maximize the wealth of shareholders so the conflict of interest may also arise here now to resolve this risk we can in line the reward of directors with the wealth of shareholders for example if the wealth of shareholder will increase accordingly the reward of director will increase so there are some suggested solutions for it for example link the rewards with the minimum level of profits and other suggested solution is eva eva stands for economic value added we will see it shortly and an other solution for it is revenue growth and here we have also another solution which is known as e s o p e s o p stands for executive share option scheme all of these suggested solutions have their own pros and cons now i am going to clear this screen so that we can see them in more details okay so we were talking about agency relationship or agency theory basically this relationship exists between two parties the first one is known as principal and the second one is known as agent our principals are shareholders of the company and agents are directors of the company now these shareholders appointed these directors 
to work on their behalf because the shareholders cannot involve in day to day operations of the company so that's why they have appointed some directors so that directors can act on their behalf and as a fiduciary duty of directors they must have to work in the best interest of the shareholders so it is their moral and fiduciary duty to work in the best interest of shareholders this relationship can also exist between any other party too for example it may exist between the employee and manager of the company it may exist between employee manager and customers or supplier of the company but the most important relationship is between the directors and the shareholders who have invested in the company this is the most important relationship till now everything is fine but the problem arises when the directors do not work in the best interest of shareholders instead when they work in their own their own best interest okay so when they start to work at their own best interest then at that point conflict of interest may arise now to solve this conflict of interest we have different options for example minimum profit level for example eva for example revenue growth and in the end we have e s o p fine we will see it later but right now let's start with minimum profit level what if we associate the remuneration of directors according to this solution we try to link the remuneration of directors with the profit levels of the company for example if the profit of the company will go up if the profit of the company will go up only then the directors of the company can get more remuneration or bonuses so it is the concept behind it but it also have some drawbacks too for example the directors or managers of the company can simply manipulate the numbers or figures to show false profit levels fine so the directors and managers can manipulate the numbers and by manipulating they can get more reward they can get more bonuses so it is one of the major drawback and other drawback is it is more focused to short term managers may try to gain or to make more profits in short term and instead they may sacrifice the long term profitability of the company right so it is an other drawback of it and one more drawback that we have is the manager may simply stop working when when they feel that they have achieved minimum 
profit level as a target so when they achieve some minimum profit level they may stop working and get relaxed again it may impact on the company's achievability for example a company could achieve more if managers couldn't stop at some specific point right so these were some basic problems with the minimum profit level okay now if we talk about eva if we talk about eva then it is the abbreviation of economic value added according to this concept the director of the company can get more reward only when it work in the best interest of the shareholders to increase their wealth but the problem is bonuses or reward calculation can be complex okay now if we talk about the revenue growth according to the revenue growth the manager will get more reward when the revenue of the company will increase but again we have certain problems with this method for example a manager or director of the company may try to sell a product which may increase the revenue increase the revenue but on other hand it is not profitable so they are increasing revenue at the cost of profit fine they can also do it by they can also increase their revenue for example by decreasing the sales price per unit in this way they can sell more number of units but again they will compromise with the profits of the company so that were its major drawbacks now if i talk about ESOP then it is more detailed so I am going to clear the screen so that we can talk about it okay let's discuss about what is ESOP ESOP it stands for executive share option now the company offered this option to their employees for number of reasons for example to retain them in long term it may also encourage the managers or directors of the company managers or directors of the company to work in this way so that they can increase the share price in long term let's start with an example let's say it's 1 1 20 20 and at this date company or the employer agrees with employee that we will give you certain amount of shares for example we will give you 2000 number of shares or we will give you the option of 5000 number of shares at certain period let's say that period is 2 years so that is 112022 now the commitment is if the employee will serve the company for 2 years for continuous 2 years
then after two years we will give you an option to buy a certain number of shares so at this date they will grant an option for example you can purchase 5000 number of shares or 2000 number of shares now let's say the employee continue to work with the same company then after two years the company or the employer will will give a grant letter to employee that we are giving you the option to buy the certain number of shares and this date is known as grant date now here is very important thing that on the grant date employee cannot buy these shares instead the employee and employer will agree at certain terms and conditions for example if the employee continue to work for let's say one more year or two more year or three more year etc whatever decides between both of them then they can exercise then they can exercise this option not at this moment but at the later date so this grant letter is a conditional paper it is a conditional paper with some terms and condition whatever decides between employee and employer of the company let's say in these terms and conditions they have decided the three years period now at after three years that will be one one two zero two five after these three years the employer will give employee an option to buy those here whichever is committed between both of them but only if he continue to work but only if he continue to serve for three more years or whatever the period is decided between employee and employer of the company now let's say the employee leave the company after grant date at some point then he will not have any option to buy these shares because it was a conditional papers with some terms and condition so in order to buy these options he must have to serve for three more years according to the terms and condition only then he can purchase that number of shares right now again it depends on employer and employee they can decide any rate for example you may buy a share at dollar five at that date okay or they may also agree that you can pay only uh, you can pay only 50 percent of the market share excuse me or they may decide that they can pay only 50 percent of the market share whatever the price will be at that day the employee can only pay 50 percent or 40 percent of the market rate of the share market rate now this period from 2022 to 2025 is known as vesting period or informally as waiting period because employee have to wait for three more years to exercise this option waiting period 
and the price at which employee and employer of the company agrees that price is known as exercise price now let's say the employee continue to work for these two years and again he continue to serve for these three years now today is 2025 this date now employee have an option either he can buy or not fine the option rest with the employee he can buy or he may just simply refuse that he don't have money he don't want to purchase for any other reason so he must simply refuse but the option remains with employee at this stage and he will have to decide either he want to buy or exercise this option or not fine now one more thing employee have certain period in which he have to exercise this option for example it's a one year period but if he don't decide anything within one year or within two years whatever decides between in these terms and conditions fine let's say one year in this case okay if the employee don't exercise or if the employee don't make any decision within one period then this option will expire expire and then the employee cannot exercise this option anymore so the employee will have to make any decision within this time whatever decides between employee and employer in the terms and conditions now this period is known as excuse me now this period is known as exercise period now here we have some disadvantages of esop for example, if at exercise state, directors sell their shares for cash, then to keep their interest, company may have to offer more share options to them. And as we are offering more share options to the director, then it can lead to the risk of dilution of equity. Further, the directors of the company can simply manipulate numbers and figures to increase the share price and value of their share options.